Hey guys, this is Jonathan from Cajun Gunworks. I'm one of the gunsmiths and the shop manager. I'm Matthew. I'm our engineer. And today we're going to talk about barrel porting. We're going to run some tests and we're going to give you our recommendations on if you should port your barrel or not. Guys, so let's get into it. Barrel porting is the milling of your barrel to help redirect the gases upwards. This acts similar to like a muzzle brake on a rifle or a compensator on a pistol. This is going to set the gun down for you and allow you to shoot faster and have tighter grooves. It'll make you look a whole lot better on your bill drills and your 1R1s for Instagram. All jokes aside, this does actually help your recoil mitigation. It'll make the pistol easier to control. And whether you're using the ports for self-defense or in competition, you will dramatically improve your precision which will allow you to be more accurate at faster rates of fire. And also for recoil adverse people, it will allow them to carry a more adequate caliber. It's not going to hurt your hands as much. You know, if somebody's weak, uh, if somebody's disabled, barrel porting will allow them to carry that bigger caliber that has a lot more stopping power behind it. The alternative to porting your barrel would be buying a compensator. The downside to this is that you'd probably have to get an extended holster for you to properly conceal carry and still be comfortable. And along with that, the Safari Land Level 3 retention holsters, they enclose the end of your gun. So if you do want gas redirection in a duty situation and you're running one of those holsters, you can't have a compensator anyways. So barrel porting is your only alternative. So we've talked about all the pros for the most part. Let's go ahead and get into the cons. As you add more ports to your barrel, you're going to be helping out your recoil mitigation. At the same time, you're going to be dumping a lot more pressure through the top of your barrel. Yeah, and there's pressure that could have been pushing that bullet out the end. Now, if you're just an Instagram guy, a range master it really does not matter. If your barbecue gun has a bunch of barrel ports and you lose a bunch of velocity, right? But it does matter if you're in a self-defense situation because hollow points are very dependent on velocity. Every hollow point has a velocity threshold that it has to hit to get proper expansion. And without that proper expansion, that hollow point will not behave properly, will not dump the energy that it needs to dump into the target rendering it basically ineffective. And most manufacturers load their bullets on the lower side of velocity anyways to make it shoot a little bit softer. You should go check out Tools and Targets YouTube channel. He does a lot more testing on hollow points and how they expand. He's the guy to go check out if you want to see if your hollow points that you carry every day are going to expand properly. His videos are very good at showing the relationship between velocity and hollow point expansion if you'd like to go look into this a little bit further. Another concern that people have is that adding barrel ports will reduce the reliability of your firearm. And to look into that, we're going to look at semi-automatic pistols in general. In a semi-automatic handgun, pressure is being built in the system as the bullet is going through the barrel. From the time the bullet leaves the casing to the time the bullet leaves the barrel, that is when pressure is being built up in the system. If you port your barrel, you are reducing the amount of time that the pressure is being built by releasing pressure earlier than you would have if it was going all the way through the length of the barrel. Well, if you decrease pressure in the system, then you would decrease the recoil spring weight to move the slide back at the same speed, right? If you go too light on your recoil spring, then it will not pick up that next round as reliably as it would have with a heavier recoil spring. If you don't have enough pressure, then you'll have short strokes and stove pipes. If you have too light of a recoil spring, then you'll have failures to feed. Both of those issues are catastrophic in a self-defense situation or in a competition setting. And our prediction is that the porting that we do will not affect the reliability or the velocity enough to render it ineffective in a self-defense or a competition situation. It's like anything else. You can take it to the extremes and it will affect your reliability, but for what we were doing, it shouldn't affect the system whatsoever. And in today's video with our testing, we're actually going to give you informational based recommendations to give you the best performance possible in whatever platform you're shooting. Okay, so now we're gonna go over the reliability portion. And the best way that we can do that is by drawing it out for you guys. This is a diagram that's going to explain operational windows with unfavorable conditions, and basically tuning of the ejection pattern, which is what we're going to be measuring in our testing. The unfavorable operating conditions that are going to affect the reliability of your firearm is if it's below freezing, if the gun is dirty, or if you have low pressure ammo. In any of these three cases, the pistol is going to eject at a shorter distance than it would with a factory recoil spring in an ideal environment. That matters for a couple of reasons. One of the reasons is reliability preventing stove pipes and short stroking. Our goal is to make these guns as reliable as possible. So to start, an ideal ejection pattern is about six to eight feet. Now let's go ahead and include some unfavorable operating conditions that we talked about. It's now below freezing. 
It's now below freezing and the gun is dirty. Now it's below freezing, the gun's dirty, and we're running low pressured ammunition. So even with all these unfavorable operating conditions, if we can maintain a heavy recoil spring, it will power through the unfavorable operating conditions. So this is the operational window for a 13 pound recoil spring. This is a 12, an 11, and a 10. If we can maintain a 13 pound recoil spring, that will overpower all the unfavorable conditions. A 13 pound recoil spring will work when it's below freezing, the gun's dirty, and we have low pressure ammunition. If we port the gun to the extent where we have to reduce it down to a 12 pound recoil spring, now the gun will only work if we have two of these conditions. So if it's below freezing and the gun is dirty, it'll work fine as long as you use standard pressure ammunition. Now if we go down to an 11 pound recoil spring, it will only work if one of these unfavorable conditions are in play. If you're shooting with a dirty gun, it needs to be high pressured ammo, it needs to be warm outside. You can kind of plug and play with that how you want to. And with a 10 pound recoil spring, the gun will not operate with any unfavorable conditions. So it better be a warm sunny day with a perfectly clean gun with standard pressure ammunition or your gun will not run. If you go too far on your barrel porting, it will not adequately pressurize the system and you will have to drop weight in recoil spring. This is why it is bad. It shortens your operational window. Obviously this is a diagram and is not exactly representative of the actual ejection patterns with the actual springs and the correlation, but this will give you a general idea of what we are talking about when we are measuring ejection patterns. So we're gonna be testing for the average change in the velocity, the angle of muzzle climb, and the ejection pattern. We're going to shoot 10 round groups with zero ports, two ports, four ports, and six 1 8 inch ports on the CZ Shadow 2. That's the flagship model CZ. We see it ported very frequently here in the shop. So that's what we're gonna go with on the testing there. We're gonna use Federal American Eagle 124 grain FMJs as our test ammo. Everybody likes Federal ammo for the most part. It's good mid-grade training ammo. We think that it's gonna print a pretty low standard deviation, which will produce a better outcome and more accuracy with the testing on velocities. To measure the actual average change in velocity with the Pro Chrono DLX, it's basically industry standard. It's not, not fancy like a Garmin or something like that, but uh, it'll be accurate enough. People have been using it for decades. Something else that we have is the ransom rest. This will help us measure our recoil mitigation. This comes with custom loaded grips for the Shadow 2, so that way we take the human element completely out of the equation. We're going to have that uh, laser angle finder as well to determine the actual percentage of change, so how effective is the barrel porting at mitigating your recoil, and how does it progress as you port more and more. The next thing we're going to look at is the ejection pattern. So we're testing for the reliability changes to the firearm. The, the ejection pattern will be a good determination if the reliability of the firearm is going to change. If it was previously launching casings 10 feet and now it's launching them 6 feet, you just reduce that pressure significantly and you might have to change the recoil spring. You might have to do some tuning and obviously if you go too far, uh, you have to go too loud of a recoil spring, then you will run into reliability issues with your firearm. Alrighty guys, we made it out to the range. We have a ransom rest set up and bolted into the table. We have our Shadow 2, went ahead and bolted that in as well. Shot about a mag through it to settle it in. Right now we have the barrel with no ports in it. We're going to find the standard deviation of the ammo and the average velocity with zero ports. And then after that we're going to transition to the barrels with two ports and then four ports and then six ports. And we're also going to measure the angle of the muzzle climb and the ejection pattern. And we'll keep notes and we'll see you guys at the end of the test. <laughs> Obviously, if we come out to the shooting range, we got to shoot some guns. So I'm going to actually shoot the gun with uh, these no ports and then the six ports to show you guys a little bit of actually in hands uh, recoil difference. Here's the fun part. The six ports. And just as another demonstration, that's a four inch gong over there on that tree. Or how about a head box on a USPSA target at 10 yards? Look guys, I'm an engineer, so I'm not very good at shooting, but still makes it easy. All 
right, you guys, we just got back from the range. We're going to go ahead and break down the results we got. So to set up a baseline for our testing, we're going to go ahead and get into the standard deviation. That Federal American Eagle 124 grain FMJ did exactly what we expected it to do. Over our different testing that we did, we had an average standard deviation of around 8 to 10, which is in hand load territory that's really good for factory ammo, which is going to proof the rest of our testing. All right, and now for the stuff that you guys care about, let's get into the recoil reduction. With two ports, we saw an average recoil reduction of 14.4%. With four ports, we saw a recoil reduction of 28.3%, and with six ports, it was 38.5%. As expected, the two ports didn't do a significant amount, but the four ports, that did about as much as most companies will advertise that their compensators do on their guns. The stuff that we're really excited about is the six ports did almost a 40% reduction in recoil. Immediately, anybody who shoots a gun with a 40% reduction in recoil will be a better shooter. A 40% reduction in recoil is going to be immediately noticeable, and for self-defense shooting or in competition shooting, it is going to give you a major advantage comparative to no ports. In the case of at recoil adverse shooters, this is going to be exactly what you were looking for. This will allow weaker people to carry a more adequate caliber for self-defense. This is going to give you basically 380 recoil out of a 9mm handgun. So let's go ahead and get into velocity. With no ports, our velocity was 1123 feet per second. With two ports, it was 1122. Four ports, 1103. And six ports, 1086. This is about what we expected, and there was a pretty dramatic drop off from no ports to six ports. That drop off was not so dramatic that you were going to lose hollow point expansion with plus P ammo. Now let's get into ejection. With two ports, we saw a 5.6% decrease from our baseline. With four ports, we saw a 15.6% decrease. And with six ports, a 35.5% decrease. That ejection loss was not dramatic until we got closer to those six ports. But even with the 35.5% ejection loss, you can still drop down a recoil spring or two and still get away with that just fine. All this data that we collected on this project will be published to our website. If it's not up now, after the video is uploaded, then it will be published very soon. But we are going to leave all this information public so you guys can actually see where the numbers we collected and where this evidence and data came from. As of right now, we only import CZ handguns, and we're possibly going to get into the 2011 market pretty soon. But we do want to go over our recommendations based off the evidence that we've collected for your future projects with Cajun Gun Works. For full-size pistols, we recommend six ports if you're going to run plus pressure ammo in a self-defense situation and four ports if you're going to use standard pressure ammo in self-defense. For compact guns, we're going to recommend four ports for plus pressured ammo, and we're going to recommend two ports in with standard pressure ammo. For all of our recommendations, we do recommend you buy a tuner's pack and tune your firearm to your carry ammo for ejection to ensure the best reliability and functionality in all circumstances. We're basing our recommendations off the ejection from baseline and the velocity that we saw on the test days. Most hollow point manufacturers recommend anywhere from 900 to 1,000 feet per second for adequate expansion through their hollow points from federal HSTs to spear gold dots to critical duties from Hornady. We are recommending at least 1,050 feet per second to get proper expansion to stay on that safe side of things. That'll also adequately pressurize the system as well to actually run a good enough recoil spring to seat that next round home. And for competition guns, we recommend sending it all the way with the six ports on the full size guns and the four ports on the compact guns. You can tune the recoil springs and you can control the unfavorable operating conditions a little bit better. You're not looking for high velocity in competition guns. You can choose what ammo you shoot. You can choose if your gun's clean or not. For competition, we recommend the most amount of recoil mitigation for the best performance possible on the range. So now that we've gone over the main stuff that we really wanted to talk about and test for, we're gonna go into some additional things that we tested and additional online conversations that a lot of people have about paraboarding. We'll go ahead and first start off with the accuracy and the testing we did on that. To test accuracy, we did two five round groups with each variation from no ports, two ports, four ports, and six ports. We used the Ballistic X calculator to compare our group sizes. In our first group with no ports, we got a group size of 0.529 inches. With six ports, we got a group size of half an inch exactly. All of these groups were shot at five yards. With such close group sizing, we're just gonna chalk it up to no loss in accuracy, even with six 1 8 inch ports in the barrel. And the next subject we really wanted to touch on was V-porting. We see that done a lot. I think that it really came from magna ports on revolvers back in the day because they could not do vertical ports because of the actual top rail that's on a revolver. But a lot of people are doing V8 porting, V6 porting, V4 porting on modern handguns. And we're gonna get into that subject and why that's less efficient than straight 
recording. We did test the V8 ports to see how that would compare to just the traditional top ports. We found that it has the same surface area as the six 1 8 inch ports, but it has around the same recoil mitigation as the four 1 8 inch ports. Instead of all that gas going vertically, now you're losing that gas horizontally, which is not helping your velocity and it's not helping your recoil mitigation. The other problem we found with V porting is you're having to actually the exact same ejection you're getting with six ports as well because you're cutting the same surface area that you would have with the six one eighth inch ports. You're getting less reliability and less velocity for less recoil mitigation with the V porting compared to the straight port. If you don't care about reliability or velocity, then we would recommend the V porting. Otherwise, we recommend you do straight ports right on top. If it's a range gun, if it's just for show, if you just want the cosmetics, it's just fine to do V porting. We're not saying you can't do V porting. You will get recoil mitigation. Just don't expect the recoil mitigation to be the same as the top in straight line ports. If you're looking for performance, you want the straight ports on top, you don't want V ports. If you're looking for cosmetics, the V port might be your thing. Another big concern we've seen on the internet with barrel porting is the frag or the gases coming out of the top of the gun. Just like on a cylinder on a revolver or a muzzle brake on a rifle, you don't wanna put your fingers in front of where gas is coming out. If you've never seen the Jerry Mitchell like exploding hot dogs in front of a revolver video, it's an old one, but you should check it out. Barrel porting will do the same thing, but so will a compensator, so will a muzzle brake. You wouldn't hold your hand around a muzzle brake on a 50 BMG, so you probably shouldn't put your barrel ports to your face while you're shooting it. You have gases changing and not going out of the barrel. It's the same thing as a revolver or a muzzle brake. If that is something you're concerned about, don't port your barrel. Don't do any gas redirection. Don't get a compensator. It's not for you. If you want to negate that and you want to get recoil mitigation, then you can port your barrel or you can do compensators. The next thing that we want to talk about are the shapes of your ports. This is similar to the V8 porting. It's more of a cosmetic thing than anything. What really matters is the size of your ports. If the shapes open up your ports, then that's going to overall help your recoil mitigation. At the same time, if you open those up more, you're cutting out more surface area out of your barrel, which again will decrease that ejection. Along with the conversation of shapes, location of the ports is something that is talked about a lot as well. The location does not matter as much as people think it does because there's higher pressure closer to the chamber, so you're getting a lot more gas redirection if it's closer to the chamber, but you're getting more leverage at the end with less pressure. So you're having less gas redirection, but you're having more leverage on the firearm. They kind of negate each other to an extent, and we have found that putting barrel ports closer to the end of the barrel is more effective for structural integrity and longevity of the barrel. Barrels typically erode closer to the chamber, so you wanna keep that port further at the end of the gun to increase the longevity of the barrel. Besides that, location and shapes do not matter nearly as much as surface area does in the actual ports themselves. All right, guys, we're gonna go ahead and wrap up the video here. Uh, we gave our recommendations, we gave you guys the numbers, and enough information for you guys to determine if you would like to port your barrel or not. If you would like to port your CZ, our phone number's on our website, and you can see all the work that we do as well on our website. We'll be posting all this information, it'll be accessible to everybody who wants to look at it, regardless if you're porting a CZ or a Glock or a Smith & Wesson. You'll be able to use this information to determine if barrel porting is for you or if it's not. As always, guys, we appreciate you guys watching. We hope you stay tuned for more testing. We will be doing more videos like this in the future. If you'd like to check us out, check out our Instagram, check out our Facebook, and check out our website. And until then, we'll see you guys next time.